Hey everybody, Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon coming at you with a few pro revenge stories. First one, a client refused to pay, so I had some fun. Let's jump right in. When I have the time and come across interesting projects or clients, I take on one-off assignments to create websites, graphics, applications, etc. for said clients. I recently had a client for whom I created a website. Their old website looked like it was created in the early 90s, but it drew a lot of traffic, so the need to update was clear. Like always, we first agreed on the scope and design. My client showcased his competitor's websites for me, explaining what kinds of things he absolutely wanted for his site, but better, as he put it. I then had him sign a standard contract and pay a small upfront fee. Everything went smoothly and I got to work. After the project finished and I sent an invoice to my client, he told me that he won't be paying anymore. During the few days that I had worked, he had watched some YouTube videos about creating websites and he had come to the realization that he, without any prior experience in web design or programming, could create an equally impressive site in pretty much the same time as I had and so he didn't feel like he should pay me anything extra. I reminded him of our contract and he flat out said that I am free to take him to court but he won't be paying me. Obviously, I had no intention of taking him to court because it would result in more headache than it'd be worth, but I wasn't just going to let this slide. The website was already live and teeming with visitors, but my client, although they were a newfound web design professional, hadn't realized that I was still the only one who had access to the site's back end, which meant that I could make any changes to the site and he couldn't do anything about it. So, I remembered how he had told me about all of his competitors' websites. I figured the appropriate response would be to write a script that replaces his company's contact details and opening hours with those of his competitors. Every time the site would load, the script would randomly show one of the competitors' contact details instead. I also made it so that the contact form requests would be sent to a randomly selected competitor's email. I chose not to inform my client of this and went on to enjoy my vacation. Within a week, I received several emails and a call about my client's concerns that something was wrong, that he hadn't received a new client through the site in almost a week even though the site's visitor count is much higher than before thanks to the new design and improved SEO that he hadn't yet paid for. I let him know what I had done and told him that I would undo it but it would take me about an hour for which I would be charging. Since I was on vacation, I'd apply the rush fee stated on the contract for that hour and of course, I told him that this would all be added on top of the original fee that he owed me plus interest for late payment. Naturally, this led to insults and threats being thrown in my direction, to which I calmly responded that I will begin work once I have the money on my account and if he doesn't want to lose any more customers to his competitors, he best man up quick. He tried to call me immediately and I just declined the call. After the second attempt to call me again, I sent him directly to voicemail. I received an express payment to my account the very next morning. OP added an edit onto the story and I feel it helps tie the story up. It says, The client's old 90s styled website was running on a similarly outdated legacy hosting package. As such, I had convinced him to update his hosting provider in the process. So I had paid for the hosting and set up the new site on that server. I did not touch the old site at any point. After I was done with the site, I showed it to the client who was happy with it and told me to redirect his domain to the new site server. To do this, he gave me the login details to the site where he hosted his domain. I logged in, redirected the domain, and logged out. Then, after it came clear that my client hadn't paid me and told me that they wouldn't pay me, all I did was modify the code that I had written that was on the server that I had set up that the contract stated would be my property until the final payment was made. As my client didn't pay, I merely edited code that I owned on a server that I owned. He could have gone and redirected his domain back to his old server at any point, 
but even after his newfound web development expertise, didn't know or care how to do. The only thing that was illegal, my client was refusing to uphold the contract and pay me for the work that I had done for him. Have we not learned yet not to piss off people who know a lot about computers? I mean, come on. Everything we do these days is run by computers, and these people know how that stuff works. On to our second story. Idiot accuses me of giving him all the crap jobs when I wasn't. So, I did. Let's jump right in. The backstory. Years ago, I worked as a carpet salesman, and part of the job was to book fittings. Nice and simple, book it with the customer, and assign it to one of the carpet fitters. Fitters are paid based on the area that they fit, and each fitter was expected to do about XX square meters. I can't recall the exact number of carpet per day, with stairs counting triple area because they take longer. Some jobs are easier than others. For example, a large room is quicker than a lot of small rooms, and doing a whole house is quicker than a lot of small jobs, even if the area adds up to the same. So one of the things I always tried to do was split the jobs fairly so each fitter got a fair share of the good and bad ones. I also tried to give each fitter jobs that were near each other to limit the time they had to spend driving around. The idiot. However, despite me sharing the jobs evenly, one fitter, who I'll call dumbass, did nothing but complain. This is too much for one day, you're making me work late. This is too little for one day, I'm not earning enough. Why do I get stuck doing all the bathrooms? The fitters hated bathrooms, as they are small and awkward. Note that none of the other fitters had any problems at all with how I was booking things. Dumbass was also responsible for more customer complaints than any two other fitters. Finally, one day, Dumbass called in and said that I'd booked too much and he wasn't going to do all the jobs and it was all my fault. This resulted in two customer complaints, justified as they'd taken a day off work and now weren't getting their carpets that day. And I got a lot of hassle from my manager who assumed I had messed things up. The Revenge from then on, I stopped splitting things fairly and started doing exactly what he'd always accused me of, which was to make sure that dumbass was first in line for the worst of the jobs. A third floor flat, where in a building without a lift, goes to dumbass. A tiny bedroom on the very edge of the area we covered, followed by a job right in the city center, goes to dumbass. An L-shaped room with lots of alcoves, lots of cutting, and a pain to do goes to dumbass. Any house where the guy who goes out to measure the rooms complains about being disgusting goes to dumbass. The result, after about two months of this, dumbass quit working for us. A replacement was soon hired, and I went back to evenly splitting the good and bad jobs. That story had a healthy dose of malicious compliance. You said I was giving you all the crap jobs. I wasn't, but here you go. On to our third and final story. Mess with my dog? I will salt the earth. Let's jump right in. A bit of background first to make this make sense. I rent a home from a guy that also runs a business on the property. There are two homes his home and our rental, and two work buildings, a small warehouse and a large garage. These buildings all share the same address. This is important. There's a woman that works in one of those buildings named Pam. Her real name, because if Pam is reading this, I sincerely hope she eats a d Well, about nine months ago, we got a dog. She's less than a year old and is still learning how to walk on a leash and stuff. She loves being outside, so much so that she will cry all day if you don't let her out for at least a few hours. Also, we have her on special food and monitor her water because she will drink until she barfs. We still love her, but she is dumb as hell, haha. <laughs> well, the property doesn't have a fenced in yard, so she was stuck with taking a bunch of walks a day until we installed a dog run type thing. It's high up and she is tethered to it, it gives her a bunch of shade and about 20-25 feet of run around and play space. She gets a reasonable amount of water all day as we have one person home at all times. Well, 
Pam comes over a couple months ago to tell me I should give the dog back to the shelter because I don't play with her enough and she's tied up outside. I rolled my eyes and say, thanks, but you don't live here and don't know our situation and close the door in her face. Well, she has spent the last couple months harassing us. She's tried taking the dog off tether when she thinks we aren't home. She's been successful a couple times, giving her food, giving her water, and playing with her. Except for puppy kidnapping, these don't sound too bad, I know, but there is context. We tell her to leave us alone at least three times in person and once in writing. Finally, she gets fed up and calls the police. We have no idea she did that until an officer shows up. He asks for our side of the story, and I tell him that we don't let her run free as this is a rural area and she is a baby. She could get hurt or lost. We don't want her feeding the dog because she has a special diet and it messes with her stomach. We don't want her water because of the throwing up issues and she is giving it in a plastic coffee container that she could chew and swallow bits of plastic and need surgery or die. We don't want her coming over and playing with the dog because she uses her sleeve as a toy and we are now struggling to train the dog to not bite people's sleeves. The officer hears our side and checks on the dog and says not only is our setup compliant with the law, it's one of the best ones he's ever seen. He said not to worry, that we are doing nothing wrong and that this Pam lady doesn't seem all there and thinks the dog should be free. Do not let her do that. Great. We contact our landlord to tell him what happened and that we don't want to see his employee on the property line for the house we are renting. I'm not asking she be fired or anything, just that I don't have to see her. The landlord basically says, not my problem, that's between you and her. I legally can't do anything, you have to follow the law. Well, we sit with that for a couple weeks and she starts back up again. This time, we've had it and storm outside when she shows up. She gets between us and our dog and refuses to move. We are trying to get the dog from her and she won't let us. That was enough for me. So I took the bowl of water I was carrying and poured it over her head. No regrets, she deserved it. And she is in shock that I did that. The same way a Karen is shocked when someone calls them out. I tell her for the millionth time she isn't welcome here and she yells, call the police then. Here's where the compliance starts. The landlord refusing to take sides after our repeated attempts to ask for help means I'm left to figure this out myself. I said to the landlord, if you don't handle it, I will do anything I legally can to fix the situation. He said, okay, he's not taking sides. Cool. I called the police. I still had the card from the first officer that showed up and referenced him and told them how she had already been advised by an officer to leave us alone. The new officer issued a trespass order against her. The order specifically states that she is not allowed at the address the house is at or any affiliated buildings or land on that lot. She's not allowed to come to the property to work. The landlord then gets mad and tells us to revoke it so he could use her to work. We refuse. In fact, since she didn't help us and told us to go by the laws, that's what we are doing. We don't have a rental contract. He wants us to pay in cash for tax reasons and he won't fix anything at the house so is basically a slumlord. Guess who is only getting checks from now on, and I will be deducting the cost to fix stuff around the house from rent as I am allowed to by law. In fact, I'm even willing to sign a rental agreement. Since this house is not up to code and doesn't have a separate area, I'm well within my rights to sign the lease and kick him and the business out of the larger house. If he tries to fight that, or he has to explain to a court why he didn't file any rental income on his taxes, and then reimburse us for all the rent we've paid to live in a house that he was expressly told by the city he couldn't rent out. We found this out recently. His business was also dumping waste and burning waste on the property, which is not in compliance with the law. Guess who's calling to report that? 
he also doesn't offer the proper protective gear to his employees, has a ton of OSHA violations, and doesn't post the required stuff about labor laws. I will be reporting that too. Because if you only want to follow the laws, I have no problem with that. Another story of pro-revenge via malicious compliance. Well done, OP. I want to thank all three of the OPs for sharing their stories on the Pro Revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.